Good day, my fine friend, and welcome back. So, we are finally here with uh, just under 15 hours left to go, but we will be unlocking the brand new Diamond Scale Dragon, who of course is the 10,000 point reward in the Cape Craze event. So here he is, this beautiful greeny blue dragon. So, as always with uh, the past two Cape Craze events, it was just a hell of a lot of re-rolling for more or less strawberries and the hazelnuts, but we got there in the end. So uh, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. But we do get a new dragon out of it, and of course Diamond Scale is a Shadow Plant and Water Dragon, which all things considered, he's probably really not that bad for players that have just unlocked the Shadow Element. Maybe you want a little bit of water. He's decent, so we do have that brand new boy, and he will be ready tomorrow. So aside from that event now being over, thank goodness, because I find it incredibly boring, I do also want to note that of course we have Ranger leaving us tomorrow as well. Uh, you can see I did manage to breed another Ranger in the meantime, but um, coming up after Ranger is of course going to be the Bounty Hunter Dragon that we've known about for a good while now, and Bounty Hunter is a legendary wind and shadow dragon and i'm probably going to go through all of this in the breeding guide tomorrow anyway but for bounty hunter there is a super duper easy combination and it's pretty much the only combination that you'll really want to use if you have it available and it is jade and fire because if we go to the combo section for bounty hunter on the dml planner you'll see that Jade and Fire gives a 6.67% chance with an average misbreed time of an hour and 56 minutes. It is an insanely good combination. So, for example, if I go into the breeding den, of course I can't breed it quite yet, but if we pop in a Fire Dragon and a Jade Dragon, which I don't actually have on this account, we would only have three possible outcomes. So anyone that does have the Jade, it is going to be fantastic for you. Uh, the big problem for me is that I got Jade on an alt account, but never on my main account. So a lot of people are going to be kind of upset that they don't have Jade available, because the only one that I have is Jade Warrior. But for those of you that do have it, three possible outcomes. That is going to be the only combo that you want to use if you have it available, but unfortunately Jade's the only dragon with that breeding combo of elements. So uh, aside from that, the next highest is going to be about a 5%, which is Plant and Bludgeon, which is still a good combination. Like Plant, Bludgeon, or Plant and Fire Mage. So we'll pop those two in just to give you an actual example. So we'll go Fire Mage, and uh, because I do have my Fire Mage hatch, yeah I do. So if we go in that, that's only four other possible combinations as well, but obviously the other one is just insanely good. But overall this month for Bounty Hunter coming up, we are going to have an insane set of breeding combos available. And so this lends into what I was talking about last time with the Dragon Master Pass. Again, with the Dragon Master Pass, um, I did gain like a thousand points or two thousand points in just a couple of days. And the way that I managed to do it was pretty much just going for Ranger in one breeding den. And I used a couple of uh, second breeding den relics. And I just bred for the Harpy and Elephant Dragons. So that's what I did to get some really easy points. And again, coming up to next month with such an easy Dragon of the Month breed. Just trying to breed lots of them is probably not even going to be a bad thing. But... You can also go for the Dragon of the Week breeds. I don't want to forget about those. The only problem is sometimes the Dragon of the Week has a really low breeding chance, which can kind of suck, really. I mean, next week we do have the all of the event schedule stuff that's been revealed to us, and we've got Wooly coming out next week, which should be interesting. So if we go to breed these, it's... A dragon that has nine possible outcomes total so uh, again breeding for the dragon of the week is not going to be a super high chance it's going to be about a three point what four percent chance when included in this which is actually going to be 
lower than Bounty Hunter. So you'll see just outright, you're going to be a hell of a lot more likely to actually breed Bounty Hunter than you are for the Dragon of the Week. So you might as well go for Duplicate Legendaries because don't forget, when you've got Duplicate Legendaries as well, you can also ascend them and uh, you will get a full set out of them because they're a limited time dragon. You'll see all these dragons here, it says full set, and that's because they're limited availability. Whereas the others are technically not. I mean, Mert should, shouldn't should even be possible. It's not actually possible to have a duplicate firefly like me. That was just a strange bug that happened a long time ago. But, you know, it's one of those things where I wish that what they would do in DML is say we've got a brooding combo coming up with the best combo being for jade i wish that they brought out in advance events to actually give us those dragons consistently because then that would make sense right it's like we could sort of work out if they did it in that order what's sort of coming up and the players that haven't been playing a long time and don't really know about that they're not gonna really know but you know, alas. I guess I'm just salty because I'm not going to have Jade and other people will. I have used Jade to breed for a Dragon of the Month before. Just not on my Windows account. <laughs> uh, I always forget which dragons I actually have. And wow, three lots of gems in these, these ruins, really? I mean, I'll take it. You see, some days DML is just like that. Some days you'll feel stressed with DML. Sometimes you'll feel frustrated. And then other times DML will just give you gems after gems after gems in the ruins. It's like, whoa, 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 can you calm down? You're sort of scaring me over there. But, you know, overall, I'm just glad that the Cake Craze event is done. Um, I did notice that there were a lot less of the legendary quests asking for epic ingredients this time. I'm not sure if it just ended up happening like that. But I was stuck on strawberries just only strawberries for probably three days because I was sitting there re-rolling for I think it was seven to nine hours and not a single strawberry was turning up. I had all of the rainbow lollipops and all of the spring cherries that I could possibly have needed but strawberries just were not coming out at all and that's when the event feels really really annoying and it's sort of the same thing as when we have the dragon dice event when you're trying to re-roll for a specific dice number and it just doesn't happen. That feels frustrating. I think that that's the sort of thing where there should be an implemented sort of, um, you know, system. How if you've re-rolled for, I don't know, a legendary ingredient, I don't know how they'd implement it, but if you've re-rolled for an ingredient once, that ingredient can't turn up again until you accept it once, if you know what I mean. Like say, right now we've got an apple and say I go and trash it and re-roll it. And then we could make it that until the next time we accept an apple, we can't actually see it again. I don't know how unfair and uh, how unbalanced that would be, probably very, but uh, it'd feel a hell of a lot better than it does currently. It's just like how the Dragon Dice event I feel like it would be so much nicer if when we re-roll that dice we are just guaranteed to not get a number that we've already re-rolled or even, even if you make it it has to appear twice and then after that you can't see it again because sometimes you just sit there and you will get every single number apart from the three that you need and it might take 35 re-rolls to get a three once and that's all that you needed and statistically it was incredibly unlikely that it might take that many tries and you see the other numbers x amount of times but actually i think it's a little bit higher than that it'd have to be but you know what i mean sometimes not having inbuilt mechanics that guarantee things even when it comes to rng is a really bad thing because, you know, people always say, ooh, I wonder if Gameloft is manipulating the odds and manipulating the RNG, blah, 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 blah. They may be in some ways, but I guarantee you they're not with the dice rolling and uh, with the ingredients and things like that. That's why it feels so bad sometimes. 
because maybe most people have a fine time, you know, they'll get the average luck, they'll get the ingredient after a couple of re-rolls. But if you just happen to be a person that's sitting there waiting on one ingredient and it takes you half of the event period to see it once, that feels like a crappy event. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's my take. I think DML would benefit greatly if uh, it implemented more guarantees of hitting after X amount of rerolls and things, but I don't know if they're ever going to do that. And even if they did, would they implement it in a way that's actually beneficial? I'm I'm tempted to say probably not. Obviously, I wouldn't want that to be the case. <laughs> but my um my faith has been destroyed a little bit, especially over the say last eight months of events or so. <laughs> they have really, really pushed me in terms of um what I thought that they were capable or not capable of. There were certain things where I genuinely believed them when they said, you know, we're trying to improve on the bad parts and take away some of the RNG and reduce time spent in game. You know, I'm still going to hold it that uh, the best mechanic in the entire game, or not mechanic, but the best update feature of all time is going to be four times speed. Because now, if I have to go back and see an old clip and it's not at four times speed, I feel physically ill. I don't even want to contemplate going back to one times speed anymore because I will just explode on the spot. It's I am physically incapable of watching two times speed DML anymore. It is the harsh truth. Four times or nothing. I actually end up sometimes doing all of my enchantment battles every day, like 20 plus battles a day, and I never would have done that before. Single-handedly, that was like one of the most necessary feel-good changes they'll probably ever implement. Dragon Dale still feels like crap and so does Kate Craze though, so that's my take. But at least we got the dragon out of it, eventually. So, um, for now, I am going to actually keep my breeding den empty and not go for another ranger because I want to be on the ball and breeding for Bounty Hunter as soon as he comes out. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll try and breed in both breeding dens because with the dragons in the month when they're coming out, you want to try and breed them as quickly as possible because if you get them sooner rather than later, you can get them before any major events come along. But you don't want to leave them a week and then end up in the middle of a major event and then you've got no time to actually breed it. Anyway, that is uh, going to be me for today. So I do hope that you also got yourself your own diamond scale, and any other dragons from either the dungeon or any other breeding and such. Next week we have a hero's challenge for the snowflake again for some reason. But apart from that, I'm sure we'll have more Chinese New Year news. So stay tuned for that and the new dragon of the month. So uh, for now, take care, enjoy yourself, and uh, I do hope to hear from you soon.